Hi everyone, last time we were with Nick Simonek, the astrophotographer, we were out in his dome showing you how his telescope worked, what equipment he used to capture images of deep space. Today we want to show you what he does with that data he gets from space, how he processes it, usually in Photoshop. Now I should point out this isn't going to be a Photoshop tutorial, we're not showing you every step. It's just to give you an idea of the sorts of things he does to take that raw material from space and turn it into the amazing pictures we often see from him. What I'd like to show you is actually um, an image I took of the Orion Nebula two or three years back now from the Back Garden Observatory. And it's really to show you what can be done to bring out objects of interest within the raw unprocessed data. And the Orion Nebula is a good example of that because there's some very interesting structure in there. So I'll be using Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop. So what we're looking at on the screen is obviously the Orion Nebula itself. This area here is called the trapezium. You can see the four stars here and this area around here is called the fish's mouth. The Orion Nebula of course is a emission nebula. The stars within the nebula itself have collapsed and formed out of the gas and dust and they're kind of firing very high energy radiation back into the nebula, sculpted in this incredible three-dimensional shape. And it's that what we need to bring out. The first procedure we'll use on this is something called the high-pass filter which is a kind of sharpening filter. Initially we just create a duplicate image as a separate layer and then we apply the filter to that layer. Now, when you see that on the screen, you're probably thinking, well, it hasn't exactly improved the image that much, but it is just applying the filter to the top image. What we then do is just blend the two together to produce a sharper version. So that's with the high pass filter applied, and that's without. You might notice that it appears the image is kind of snapping into focus. You can see more structural detail around here. Something else we can do, we can use Photoshop's layers to maybe bring out some of this area around here. You can see, as the image looks at the moment, it's quite dark, but I know from experience that the nebula is actually filling all of this area around here. It's just the way the image is being shown on the screen. I can work specifically on just the outer part of the nebula, just using this so-called eraser tool here. We're not affecting this part of the nebula. We want to retain that as it is, because that's just showing us all this lovely structural detail. But can you see now how magically these outer parts of the nebula are just beginning to appear? And again, we can do a direct comparison between what we've actually got on the screen now and how we started. What we're doing here, of course, is just working on what we call the luminance data. To produce a colour image, what we have to do, of course, is use red, green and blue filters. Although the camera itself is black and white, and the images we take through the filters are black and white, when we combine them in Photoshop, it suddenly snaps into colour. We actually just have to open these up now. There's three files, red, blue and green. And what we have to do is we have to tell Photoshop to combine them into a three-channeled colour image. It's very straightforward in here. We just come over to the Channels menu, select Merge Channels, we select RGB colour and three channels, one for each of the colours. And here we actually just have to assign the correct image to the correct channel. Now, this is an image in its rawest state. We've just taken this colour data and we've combined it all together. We need to work a little bit on this to get it looking a little bit better. The first thing we need to check is the actual colour alignment of the stars because these images may have been taken two or three weeks apart if the weather was bad. So it may be that the telescope wasn't pointing quite accurately to get them in perfect alignment. So what we have to do is to just zoom in and have a look at one of these stars. And you can see there that they're not actually in alignment. You can see the green one is just shifted slightly, the red one is, and the blue. We select the red channel. What we do now, we move the red channel relative to the other parts of the image. Can you see how I'm just dragging the red stars away? So we just put that on there. Now we just do the same thing to the blue channel. There it is. You can see it's sort of moving around. And the green, well the green doesn't look too bad. So you can see now all the stars are nicely in alignment. From this point on, it becomes very, very subjective what you actually do to the final image. It's a very personal thing and everybody processes their images in a different way. Something that will degrade your image when you're working with colour is light pollution. And that manifests itself as a background glow in the image. So we can start to process that. A quick and dirty way would be to select what's called colour balance. You have red, green and blue on this side. They're opposites at the other end of the scale. And just at the bottom here we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if we're working, for example, on the sky background, we need to work with the shadows part. The principle is we switch it to shadows, we come up to where the green slider is, and because the light pollution is manifesting itself a little bit as green around the edge, we just take the green down a little bit. As I undo that and redo it, can you see how 
the image has shifted more towards a slightly reddish colour. A lot of people will be quite happy to stick with just a straight RGB image as a colour image. And that, when we first started, that's how we used to do it as well. And then a friend of mine suggested an alternative technique called LRGB imaging, a lot of luminance, red, green and blue. And the idea behind that is you shoot a deep unfiltered image just to build up the maximum amount of signal that you can during an exposure. But what we can actually do now is combine the colour layer with the luminance layer and blend the two together. And it's a simple click in Photoshop to do that. Even so, once we're aligned now, as you see here, the end result isn't very pleasing. You've got this horrible salmon pink colour. So there's quite a lot of processing that we have to advance to to actually get the end result. It would take too long to do it here and now. We don't want to sort of bore people with the results. But what I can do is actually show you what the end result of using these two images was. This required probably about an hour's worth of processing. And what we're seeing here is this union of colour information from one set of filters with a deep unfiltered image which has captured all, for example, the incredible structure around the trapezium. The Orion Nebula becomes very three-dimensional when you see it in these different colours. I think it's fair to say this is probably one of my favourite images. And both components were taken on fairly poor nights, a lot of haze and a lot of dust and stuff like that around. Are you trying to make this look real or are you just trying to make this look beautiful? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by real because what is real? You might have 10 images living next door to each other on the same night taking a picture of the Orion Nebula. If they're using different filters or different telescopes or different cameras, their results will be subtly different. And because acquiring the data is only 50% of the job, the second 50% is the image processing. And as we've seen, it's a very personal thing and you can, you can really put your own stamp on an image and make it your own. I'm trying to make it not look real. I'm trying to make it look good, which isn't the same thing. Just a quick reminder, if you want to see more of Nick's work, other than what we show you here on Deep Sky Videos, you can check it all out at his website. It's ccdland.net. And also, we've got the previous video. I know a lot of you have probably seen it already, but there it is. You can click on that or underneath. That's the video all about his telescope and the equipment he uses to capture the images in the first place.